Good Saturday morning everyone. How's it going? Sean here with another awesome Genetry Solar video because we've got some good news. We still have some work to do, but the good news is thanks to SIDS, tireless working on code and our testing together, trial and error, etc. I have these two inverters running currently right now and they are running my central air my smaller of the two central airs currently in daisy mode and uh my well pump keeps kicking on as well while the central air is running no problems there so let's talk about what's actually going on here again i will do a much more deep dive video into this because right now i'm putting all of my time into trial and error stuff testing and tweaking with sid so this is what we've come up with so far. Daisy mode is working. It seems to work flawless with continuous loads. Surge loads, however, there's the well pump just kicked on. Now again, my central air upstairs is actually running and the well pump just kicked on. So combined between the two, you've got about five kilowatts right now between the two inverters and they are in fact sharing the load. So, um, You'll see the well pump is actually going to kick off here in a second. I don't know. You guys probably can't hear the click. I can hear the click of the well pump in the back. Uh, it'll be just a second here. Once the well pump kicks off, that three kilowatts will turn into probably more like two kilowatts, one and a half kilowatts or so. Um, still going, still going. So anyway, while the well pump is filling up, because we're, there it goes. Well pump just kicked off. So you can see there. So this is a very, very fine song and dance. Um, this is a 200 piece orchestra that has to be on every note every single time. It's very, very complex. There's a lot of software at work right now that is doing all the work. And so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make the inverters run 50-50, right? to perfectly double your output if you have two, triple your output if you have three, etc. One of the weak points that we have right now that we are still working on and may not be able to perfect because of the limitations of the hardware, software, etc. is being able to carry a 50-50 surge. That is right now the weakness of the system. Now, for those of you who purchase multiple inverters, don't panic. This is not a panic video by any means. We're still tweaking it. We can get better at it. It's just going to take some time. So what we have discovered, um, this one inverter here, this GS6 that's sitting right here, it can start a 77 amp plus surge by itself. That's almost... 20,000 watts. Now, I certainly wouldn't recommend everybody go out and start surging their 6,000 watt inverters to 20,000 watts, but from our testing so far, and the central air is running right now, it's running on these two inverters, this master inverter here starts the air all by itself. That's over 20 kilowatts of surge. Then the uh, slave inverter comes in and starts helping with the continuous load. That is where we are trying to tweak out. So, I don't want anyone to get their hopes up about being able to, for example, have 24 kilowatts of surge between two, um, but we are still working on that. What we know so far is that a single 6,000 watt inverter can surge to at least 20,000 watts. Um, now there is a caveat to that, that these inverters, this one here is not warranty locked. This one is warranty locked and we have to do some tweaking to find out. Basically, we, we lock the inverters to prevent someone from overloading them. The software kicks in, says, no, you're not gonna blow this inverter up, and it shuts off. However, in our testing so far, we have proven that the inverter can handle 20 kilowatts of surge. So we need to have a mathematical table in there. Sid will probably come up with something brilliant, as he always does that will basically allow the inverter even when warranty locked to be able to surge to some higher loads as long as those loads are actual surge loads loads and not continuous loads so um with a warranty unlocked inverter 
uh, you can surge all to, to the inverter blows up. That's your problem um, because the software only uh, protects it against uh, heat when the warranty is unlocked. And there's actually an option that allows you to run unlimited watts. But as soon as you void your warranty, well, we're not going to cover it. So if you go and try to start Amazon's warehouse air conditioning on one GS6 and it blows sky high, well, that's your problem because you voided the warranty. That would not be possible with a warranty locked inverter because it would see uh, over 12,000 watts of surge and automatically shut down immediately. It would stop that before it caused any catastrophic failure. So what we're doing is trying to tweak that number so that we can try to determine if a surge load is well within the capabilities of the inverter itself. The well pump just kicked on again. And these numbers are not dead on. I can tell you that right now. Um, we are, like I said, we're still tweaking. So the slave inverter is doing less work than the master inverter right now, and that's all in software. Sid's taking the information I'm giving him, he's tweaking it, he's fine tuning it, he's getting it where it needs to be. So yes, right now the master inverter is doing more of the work, not much more. And these readings here, this LCD reading is definitely off. And this is a software bug, which you can clearly see in the max watts reading as negative 20 watts. So again, this is something we're working out. But I wanted to give you a video to actually show you that it is working. The stuff at the end, which is the important stuff, like the central air, is in fact running on these two inverters at the exact same time. These two inverters are pushing that compressor and that furnace blower motor right now to cool the house, or at least the upstairs of the house. It takes the 77 amp surge on the master inverter, then the slave kicks in and starts to help with the continuous loads. Again, tweaking is what we have to do. Will we ever get a perfect 50-50 or 33, 33, 33 uh, with a surge? I don't know, and it's probably unlikely. But the good news is that a single GS6 can handle much more surge than we had originally thought that it could. I was pegging the surge capabilities of our GS6 at 12,000 watts. Clearly, it can do much more than that, uh, 20,000 watts more likely. Um, and again, I don't want to put a number on there so that people can go and start pushing their inverters and then blowing them up. Um, but so far from my testing, and I have started this central air several times, uh, so far it does not seem to blink when it's asked to provide 20 kilowatts of surge. So that's good news. That is really good news. Um, so that gives you more room. So for those of you who ordered more than one unit, um, you do have the safety to fall back on for having a single unit basically being able to handle that surge load. Continuous loads is a completely different story. Obviously, we rate these to 6,000 watts. We are not changing that. Our inverters are rated to 6,000 watts, and that's it. Unless you unlock your warranty, you can push it harder, but again, you won't get any service if you've unlocked the warranty. Um, so from a continuous standpoint, the two inverters working together, we're trying to get them to 50-50, and that's all based on tweaking and testing. But so far, from a continuous standpoint, you can get between two 6,000 watt inverters, 12,000 watts of continuous load. And um, again, that's a testament to SID's design code, etc. We do have some tweaking. I keep saying that because I don't want anyone to jump the gun and say, well, it obviously doesn't work. We are still tweaking this for, I mean... For having two inverters that are basically blind to each other, this is pretty, a pretty big accomplishment, I would say. And you can put 100% of the credit on Sid. I'm just the tester. I'm the salesman. That's it. He's the designer. You know, I push these things as hard as I possibly can and then complain when something doesn't work. And um, he rolls his eyes and I say, you know what? This is what people are going to be doing with these inverters, and we have to be able to push them beyond their capabilities to see where they can fail. So I'm the real-world tester here, and he is the one who has to listen to my complaints. Eventually, he finds a way to fix it. I don't know how, but he always fixes it, makes it better, etc. And then when he really does truly hit a wall, then he uses my first name with a comma, and I know that it's serious and that I'm never going to be able to get what I want. So... 
Anyways, all jokes aside, this is a true, true accomplishment here. You've got two inverters that have no communication cable between the two of them that are running in as good of harmony as they can possibly be right now with room for improvement. And the fact that I can cool my house now, we're talking about, um, I believe it's a two and a half ton air conditioner <clears throat> right now. That's, that does, that's not my four ton. I've also got a four ton air conditioner, but the fact that it's running this air conditioner and the well pump, it's, uh, I heard the well pump just click on again and it's still running. Again, these numbers are not 100% accurate. This one is more accurate than this one. We're still trying to figure out why the slave seems to be either under or over reporting its load. Um, because it does look pretty good on the sine wave. You can see the sine wave is excellent at these kind of loads. Um, so yes, we are still working on it. So just wanted to give you an update. I'm going to be working on this all weekend with Sid with as much time as we can. I still have to do some yard work and things like that, but, um, this is good news. This thing is running. It's running great. Um, and here it is nine in the morning. So I don't have any solar coming in basically right now. So the AC unit is definitely consuming my battery. Um, but anyway, there you have it. So yes, you can see here the slave kind of kicked down a little bit. It's less than a kilowatt, whereas the master is still running two kilowatts. But this is not this is not accurate. As Sid pointed out, it's the throttle number that's the important thing, and that's what we're tweaking so that we can get this to be a perfect 50-50. So it's all in the trial and error. It really is. This is all trial and error. But I'll tell you what, I am super excited. Super, super, super excited. I never, ever thought, never thought that I would be able to run my central air. That is a absolute huge consumer of electricity through a GS6 inverter. I never thought I would. Never. And it does it. It does it. Now, I've got two sitting here. Two GS6 inverters that are sitting here that are running the central air. And that's just awesome. Those of you who have big, huge central air units, you don't have heat pumps or anything else like that, you know what it's like to have an electricity bill that absolutely kills you. So between the two of these, in running mode, this seems to be running a little over three kilowatts right now to run the upstairs air, um, according to the inverters. So we'll see. Again, tweaking, testing, tuning, tweaking, testing, tuning. That's what this weekend is all about. So that's what we're doing. We do have a few Genetry Solar Inverters left, if you're interested. You can go to the website. Of course, you can hit me up at A33 Genetry and check out our forums. We have a nice community growing over there. Um, so yeah, this is good news. These two inverters are, in fact, running in parallel mode. You've got the slave inverter with the two inputs that are running from the master inverter outputs, and they are being combined at the breaker panel. Right there. Master is on top, slave is on bottom. And they are running this panel here, which you can see is off from the mains. It is running this whole panel. Well pump, central air, basement lights, etc. It's all running on here. So this is awesome. This is great news and a true testament to Sid's genius. He certainly does get all the credit. I'm never going to take any credit away from Sid. He is truly a remarkable engineer. And um, I know one day, one day, he's going to be working at Microsoft. I know it because that's his calling. Take care.